Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Skidude and this is another Mindimator tutorial and today we are going to tackle the instance tab. Um, so let's get started. To start off we are going to want to add a character. So let's go ahead and let's just use the standard skin and let's make him dance. First of all let's give him a name. We'll name him Walter. Alright so first we need a starting keyframe as always. Now let's add I'm going to add one out at 30, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the rotation, and let's go this way. So let's change this. I'm going to do manual input, and I'm going to type 360 and click OK. And you're going to say, well, you know, he didn't really turn. He's still facing the same way. However, since you've added a value, he actually does turn like so. Now, let's go ahead and animate one of his legs. Let's um, bring it forward, like so. <laughs> let's make him a ballerina, and let's pull on up. Let's pull these arms out. Um, let's take this arm, and let's take a look at that. Okay, so we got him spinning, and now let's add another keyframe. And let's have him move the other way. So we're going to want to change this back to zero. And let's see how that looks. And there you go. So let's make this the same. So we're going to put that at 60. And we're going to switch this around. Um, to make this quick, I'm just going to copy that value and paste it on that value. And then reset that to zero, and let's bring the old arms down, like so. So let's take a look at twirling Dancing Steve. Actually, Walter. His name is Walter. All right, so we have this. So let's say we want to make a big dancing line of... Walters. You were you would think you're like okay well let's just let's just take him here and let's duplicate him let's let's do two and you can see it duplicates the keyframe no problem. Um, while we're on this subject right here, I want to go over one more thing um, before we actually mess around more with the instance tab. Actually, we haven't even messed around with it yet. Anyway. Um, You'll notice when you select keyframes, there's check marks now by all of these boxes. So let's go ahead and let's say, you know what, actually in, um, in this first keyframe, I actually wanted his whole body to be over here. Okay, let's go ahead and press play, but you'll notice he spins back because this keyframe is back at the starting location because I duplicated him in and those were the settings when I duplicated him. Well, you know what? I don't want to go through the trouble of moving each keyframe so that it moves exactly to where he was. So what I can do is take the keyframes. I don't want to change and unclick the position box. And I can see he actually moved out and if I press play, he just spins in the same location. And the way that's working is the keyframes, so these two that have the position thing turned off, will just mimic or adapt the position of the keyframe before it that actually has position selected. So for example, if I take this one and I turn it back on, you can see it took him back to the original spot. And let's say I move them out here. Instead of having to animate the middle spot of this keyframe, since it doesn't have position turned on, it will just kind of like the walking animation, will just do it for me and move him. I won't have to worry about where he needs to be at this position. So that works with any feature like rotation, scale, alpha, overlay. Um, that was just something quick I wanted to throw in. So let's actually turn that off so that he comes back over here. So we've got our Dancing Steves. Let's go ahead and turn the position off on those two as well so that if we change the position of this first keyframe, it just does it across all of them. So if I press play here, 
Yay, we're all dancing. We've got some dancing Steves. Uh, dancing Walters, rather. Um, now let's say, you know what? I actually, I changed my mind. I want these to be skeletons. So I go down here to skeleton. But the problem is, it's only changed this one. And now, let's say I've got 30 of these doing a big country line dance. I'm going to go... I'm going to have to go through and change every one of these skins in the library. However, there is a simpler way. What way, you ask? That is the Instance tab. So if I go down here, you're going to see all the library items, including the camera. So if I had items or blocks or schematics here, um, they would all show up here. Um, now if I click Walter here, and I click Duplicate, you'll see the exact same thing happened. Keyframes were copied. Um, let's go ahead. Okay, it copied the non-position thing. So let's go ahead and just move his first keyframe, his first frame over to here. Press play. Okay, we're all spinning, having fun. Now let's say, you know what? I don't like the skeleton one. I want to change Walter to a zombie pigman. Uh oh, what happened? It updates. The instances will update the skins um, and the skins only. Um, so if you've got a big dance and you're wanting them all to be pigmen, but then you change your mind and say, you know what, I actually want these guys to be endermen. <laughs> you can just go ahead and do that. Now, if you did want to have um, 30 different skins, you would want to use the library to add characters with specific skins because the instances will roll updates on the skins. Um, so there's the duplicate function which adds a exact copy and it will update the skin. Now there's also the add function, so if I go up here to Walter, which is the original, and I click add, and I click Create Instance of Walter. You can see it added another one. However, you'll notice it does not copy the keyframes. Now the benefit to this is you're not going to be filling up your library with needless copies or... Yeah, let's just say needless copies of characters. So let's say I've got a big walking scene here in the back um, of everything going on, of Enderman walking around. Let's go ahead and rotate him over. Let's click right here. Let's move him over there and we'll click here and create walking animation. Now, you've just got him walking in the background of this big dance. Now, if I go up here to the library tab and I go ahead and change the Walter main over to a cow, You'll see it still changes the instance, but it's not, it, it's changing the skin, um, but it's still doing its own thing. So the nice thing about this, let's say I've got a big pasture of cows. Let's, first of all, let's click OK, and let's uh, remove, yes, and remove. See, I've got a big pasture of cows um, that I'm going to be having walking around in the background of an animation. I don't want to have my library full of 30 cows doing their own thing. I want to have them all gummed up here in the instance tab because I want to keep my library as clean as possible. This is where I want to keep my master copy of characters. So for example Walter 3 here who is now a cow um, is now walking so I can go ahead and duplicate uh, duplicate him. Uh, let's go ahead and change these to make sure there are no position on. Let's change this first frame. Let's rotate them around. Um, let's bring them over here. And this position here we're going to bring down here. Bring over here and rotate him around. So let's take a look at that. We've got two cows dancing and then two cows 
walking along. So this is how I'm going to have, this is the easiest and most efficient way to make a lot of background movement as far as things go. And it doesn't even have to be background movement. If you're making a big dance scene or whatever and you're wanting to copy things, you can just duplicate them here. And they will update with the skins of the master copy, which is held up here in the library. Um, so let's go ahead and duplicate this. Now you can see it keeps the options with position and everything clicked off. So if I just go ahead and move him over here, move him over here, now we press play. Look how easy that was to add one, two, three, four, five characters doing essentially well, let's see, three to diff four different things because he's walking that way, he's walking this way, and he's on this side. So I guess three, uh, three different things. Um, but it took me like five minutes to do, and that's the beauty of the instance tab. It copies um, direct keyframes, or you can just add an instance of a character and do that thing. So let's say you've you've added all these things, and now I want to start actually working on my character. The problem is, once I start to add a lot of objects here to the timeline, I'm going to have to be scrolling up and down, finding all these things. The cool thing about this is you go to the Instance tab, you can just, first of all, you can make them just disappear. Um, second of all is you can turn them off the timeline. So if I press play here, they're all still moving, but you see it's not filling up my timeline here. Now I can focus on animating Walter here and doing that, um, just animating him. So if we press play, oops, press play, it's just a quick way to keep things cleaned up. The instance tab I guess you could call the cleaner upper. It keeps your timeline clean, it keeps your library clean, and you can just keep all the clutter here, and this is where you're going to be moving stuff. Um, now, another part of the Instance tab that I have shown already is the Lock to Parent tab, which is how you're going to connect items to characters. So, I'll just do that real quick. Let's add item. Let's select a sword. We'll name it sword. Click OK. Um, instances, sword, Lock to Parent. Pick your parent, which is going to be character 2 in this case. We're going to pick his right arm, it floats up, no big deal. Let's add a keyframe so we can edit its position. Let's bring it, let's make this negative 90. Let's actually zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Let's bring it up, let's bring it forward. Let's tilt it, and there you go. So, let's say I want to have a bunch of Steves with swords. Let's click OK. Let's character 2. And let's duplicate, duplicate. Now let's move them off over here. And you're saying, well, that didn't duplicate the sword. Something's wrong. Let's move him and let's do this. It only duplicates one object at a time. However, the beauty of it is if I just go ahead and take this sword and I hit duplicate, duplicate. Take this one, lock to parent. Character two, number two. Let's go ahead and change it to the left arm. Take this one, lock to parent. Character three, well, character two, copy number three, parent to the right arm. There you go, I just made three Steves locked three swords to their hands in like a minute. That's the great thing about the instance tab. So let's go ahead and look at our amazing dancing scene here. So let's press play. <laughs> we've got spinning Steves, we've got dancing cows, walking cows. I've just animated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things in a very short amount of time. And that's the power of the instance tab. Um, now if I don't want to use these anymore, just click the remove, take them out, 
and so on and so forth. So keep your library full of your master copies and keep your instances, oh, keep your library full of your masters and keep your instances where you make all your copies and things like that. So if I go in here, change, you'll still see it here. If I browse the skin, go to skin, oh, I need to find, oh, I don't have my, I've been changing around my files a little bit, so I don't have my skier skin. Let's see if I've got them. Um, you know, we don't need to worry with my skier skin. We will just browse skins. Um, and let's pick notch. So I click OK. See, it changed these two. I go ahead and click Walter. I don't have a different cow skin, so we'll just change them to a mushroom, and it updates it. So just know, your your instant copies of your library items will update skins and models. Um, however, if I go ahead and just click duplicate, copy of Walter. Oh, Walter, where'd you go? Oh, I need to show him. Uh, copy of Walter, Walter one two four. Oh, you know what I just did? I copied every instance of Walter right there. So let's try this again. Duplicate. Oh, that's interesting. So if I click duplicate and I've already got instances, that's going to add all new instances. So I've got a copy of a copy, a copy, copy. So I've actually got like 30 things right here. So that's just something um, interesting I just found out. If you duplicate a master library file and it already has instances, you are going to copy all the instances as well. So um, I guess that's even a quicker way to do it. If you've got, now if I wanted to go ahead and move all these cows around, I'd now have 15 cows moving around. So that's the instance tab. Um, it's going to speed up your animations. It's going to help you make multiple things moving at once. It's going to um, just make things a lot easier. And just remember, your instances will share skins, will share models. So be aware of that. If you're making a big dancing and you want 30 separate models, then you are going to need to make 30 separate library items. So that is the instance tab. Um, I guess next we'll go over the background. That's a pretty easy one. And something to look forward to, the power of this instance tab is going to be upgraded in future updates of Minimator. I was talking to David about this, and he's going to make it so you can keyframe the sunlight, keyframe skins, meaning you can now make you can make facial animations because you're going to be able to keyframe in different skins, um, meaning facial skins can change so as the timeline goes you can make a talking one because you can change in the skin of each keyframe so that's something to look forward to down the road anyway guys this is Skidoo this is instance tab um, thanks for watching subscribe thumbs up leave any questions or comments below and I will try to answer them as soon as I can and we'll go from there as always the download link will be in the description this is Skidoo I'll catch you guys later peace